131, let's get started with section 2.2. So we're going to be taking a look at linear equations in one variable. Here's your homework. Um, when I say every other odd, so 1 through 57 every other odd, again, just to remind you, that means 1, 5, 9, 13, so on and so forth. So find all the odd numbers and just do every other one of those. Our learning outcomes for this section, we're going to solve equations in one variable algebraically. We're going to solve rational equations, and if that phrase sounds familiar to you, I want to circle the word that's in here, or a word that's in here. There's many words in rational, but the one I'm looking for right now is ratio. When you hear ratio, we're talking about fractions. Everybody's favorite. They're here. Uh, so when I say rational equation, we're going to be talking about an equation with fractions in it. All right, so get pumped. We're going to be dealing with fractions. We're going to find linear equations, and that's, that's when I give you certain pieces of information and ask you to find the equation, to find a linear equation from that. Um, given two equations of lines, we're going to determine whether their graphs are perpendicular or parallel to each other, and then we're going to write the equation of a line parallel or perpendicular to a given line. So let's start with what do I mean when I say linear equations in one variable? A linear equation in one variable can be written in the form of ax plus b equaling c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a can't be zero. So the key, one of the key pieces of a linear equation is that when you look at your variable, which our variable here is x, a, b, and c are constants, which means they're just numbers, right, real numbers. But here's our variable x. In order to be a linear equation, the, the power on x has to be 1. Anytime we move beyond a power of 1, like x squared or x cubed, we move out of linear functions. We're into quadratic, cubics, and, and we'll get into all of that in Math 31. It's just for right now, we're starting with the linear equations. So again, linear equation one variable means our variable is raised to the first power. So with that, let's solve a few of these. I'm going to scooch this up so we can take a look at our first examples together. So you can see in example one here, it says solve the following equations. So we have 2x plus 13 equaling 19. That's our first equation. Now if I look at the expression on the left side, it's simplified, nothing I can do there. Simplified here, nothing I can do here. On the right side, excuse me. Um, so that means I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna subtract 13 from both sides. All right, we're gonna use the subtraction property of equality, which says if you have two equations that are equal and you subtract the same number from each side, then we'll still have equality. So if I look at the right side of this equation, I have 2x plus 13 and then minus 13. The 13s are like terms, they're opposite signs, so they're gonna cancel. And on the right side of the equation, we have 19 minus 13, so I'm gonna get six. So here I get six, these cancel, that leaves me with just 2x. All right, x is being multiplied by two, so I would like to undo that. The inverse operation to multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. The 2's cancel here. x is going to be equal to 3. All right. And so with that, if I have x being equal to 3, you can always plug back in and check it. All right. Well, let me scooch that up just so we can make sure we see it. There we go. So if x is equal to 3, I can plug this number back in and do 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 13 is 19. That checks out. All right. Now, on part B, I gave you a little bit more complicated equation. If you take a look on the left side, I have some algebra to do before I start adding and subtracting things to both sides of the equation. So I want to simplify this side of the equation before I start manipulating both sides. I'm going to distribute here, and I'm going to be careful to distribute the negative 2 to the negative 1. I'm not going to forget that negative sign when I distribute. So negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. I still have a plus x here, and I have my 14 minus x on the other side. Now again, I can simplify this side. These are like terms. So negative 6x plus x, negative 5x. I've got plus 2. This is equal to 14 minus x. This side is simplified, and this side is simplified. So now I can start manipulating both sides of the equation. So initially, when solving linear equations, Take a look at each side, the left and the right side of the equation. If there's anything you can do algebraically to them, simplify them first. And then once both sides are simplified, 
then start manipulating the both sides of the equation. All right, so you have a couple of options. I think for the most part, students like to move all the variables to the left side, and that's great, that'll totally work. So if you wanna add X to both sides, awesome. Just to be a little, I'm gonna go rogue on this. I like to have positive coefficients with my variables, so what I mean by that is I'm actually gonna add 5X to both sides, and I just want you to see this option. We'll all get the same answer at the end. I just want you to see what this would look like. So if I was gonna add 5X to both sides, on this side of the equation, those are gonna cancel out. That leaves me with a two. Over here, I have 14 minus X plus 5X. That's gonna be 14 plus 4X, okay? And at that point, then I say, well, I'd like to get the number onto this side. Now I'm gonna scooch this up so we can all see it. So give me a moment to get that in view. All right. So here we go, I'm gonna now subtract 14 from both sides. And when I do that, I get negative 12 here, and I get 4x over here. And again, if I wanna undo multiplication, let's use division. So if I move over here, I'm gonna get the fours canceling, that will give me an x, and I'm gonna get negative three here. And you could have written it as negative three equaling x, it's just usually for our, our answers, our end answers. I have the variable on the left side of the equation, and then my solution on the right side. And again, I, I could plug this in and check this. We could do this, so we got three times negative three, that's negative nine, negative nine minus one, negative 10. Negative 10 times negative two is positive 20, all right? 20 plus a negative three is 17. So when I plug negative three in here, to the left side of the equation, I get 17. 14 minus a negative three is 17, that checks out. So I can just check check myself really and go, oh, I know my answer is correct. I'm good to go there. All right, so that's going to do it for example one. We're going to flip to the next page and talk about identities, contradictions, and conditional equations. See you in a bit. Bye.